So here I was waiting for him to make the first real move. There is nothing important to say, I'm just defending slightly. When you have a cannon cart on your side of the ground, make sure you kill it out of the range of the princess tower, because since this cannon cart becomes a cannon, it can be pushed away. So if you if you use a tornado or a log, be sure you're not killing it by using the spell, because it won't be pushed away at this moment. So you have to use your spell early on, and well, kill it as soon as possible. So from this moment I knew he was playing a double head deck. So I was guessing he had, well she, he should have had a big spell but in the end he didn't with flying machine and either Mega Knight or E-Barbs. Against double head decks you want to play most of the time you're exposed defensively in order to protect your side and to make as much damage as possible on troops and not on the towers because basically you are not supposed to get any connection with it. Um, also I am playing it here in the middle because I am expecting my opponent to run a spell and I wanted him to play it on my Xbo in order to see what he was playing but he didn't. And I was not convinced at this moment he wasn't running any spell, but I just kept on with x both in the middle and I understood soon enough he didn't have any spell. But basically if he had some spell, either fireball or poison or lightning or earthquake, you are supposed to, to play your x in the anti-spell position. Playing only defensive x bows in this matchup means you have to rocket cycle. And this was a good opportunity to rocket because I could touch his tower as well as his cannon cart. When you want to log on a furnace or any other hut, just wait for the hut to produce one more troop, in this case one more fire spirit, in order to kill the troop and to hit the hut. So I started to make some cheap damage by using my log at the bridge. This is good to do as well when you are spell cycling your opponent. This is the position to take care of the flying machine without taking any damage right at the corner of your princess tower on the outside of the field. So 
So this placement works with ice wheels, but also with Valkyrie. It also works with skeletons, but it is slightly more tricky with skeletons because you might miss if you don't have the right timing. Whereas with ice wheels and Valkyrie, it, it works all the time. And have a look at my Xbo and notice how much damage he makes on the troops and buildings. As you could see, I tried to activate the king, but I failed. It is good to do it because when you you are reaching uh, triple elixir, he will play the mega knight or the e barbs, and at this moment, it is good to have the king activated. So if you can do it, do it, but it is not necessary. Also, I'm going to okay to go back to show you this. I had the Valkyrie on the right side going on, so I was interested to play my Xbo here. And also I noticed he played the Furnace at this moment. He was not threatened and he played something in the back, which means he is probably with 10 Elixir right now, and it is the case, as you can see. You can guess this with the situation. So from now, I was counting his Elixir. Also, it was six, so it was perfect for me. But I was counting his elixir one by one in order to know when he will have 10 elixir again. And because he won't be threatened again, I decided to play my ace bow so that he will probably play something in the back at the same time as I play my offensive ace bow. And by doing so, he won't be able to, well, to take a, to protect his side actually. And it worked, so I wanted you to notice this. Now we have to count. So he has just played the knees. Now we have to count four licks here. One, two, three, six bow. Oh. And now he played the tower at the same time here. So this trick works against this deck, but also against some other decks. It is good to use it when you are facing big troops, big decks or when you have no way to break through. It is also called a good timing, but good timing is more used when you have luck and this has been provocated. So this means you can sometimes provocate good timings when you know how much elixir your opponent has and what he's about to play and where. This was the case, we knew he was about to play something big and in the back. This was the perf perfect opportunity to break through. And now, at last, he's playing his Mega Knight. So, against this deck, you want to... when you, As soon as you take a lock, you want to keep it as long as possible, because this might be the only lock you get of the whole match. 